Hey everyone, it's Tim from TimGonyer.com. I'm here again with another technique of the week. This week we're going to be painting a flock of birds uh, into a large skyscape. So today what I want to show you is how to paint some birds with a little more detail than um, what we're used to seeing when we're, you know, when we're kids. We're taught to paint the little M-shaped birds that are flying off in the distance. Uh, what I'm going to do is show you how I paint a flock of birds taking the detail a little bit further, but still keeping it simple. Uh, so what I'm going to do is have you zoom in onto my uh, sketchbook and I'm going to paint in the sketchbook and then I'm going to show you how to pick your colors um, and apply it to a painting like this. So we're going to get right into it, but before I do, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and if you have any questions, make sure you comment down below. And if you get a chance, check out timgonyer.com, just my name, Dot com for online painting lessons. I have hundreds of online painting lessons in acrylic, uh, in oil, subject matter covers a large range of things, and you can also get the lessons on DVD. Okay, so let's get right into painting birds. All right, for this demonstration, I'm just gonna use some water and some raw umber with a script liner. This is the type of brush I usually use when creating birds. What I wanna do is find a good ink-like consistency with the paint, so I'm adding just enough water to do that. I don't want it super runny, but I want it nice and fluid so it flows nicely when I'm trying to draw out lines. Now, if you're going to use oil paint, which I'll use here in the demonstration on the big painting, you'd just use some 50-50 mix linseed oil and odorless mineral spirits. Alright, so let's get right into this. Basically, what I do uh, to keep it simple, just draw a curved line. So I'm, I'm going to paint a bird with its wing up that's flying. So start with the line like so, so just a curved line. Start at the same point again and bring a line out. It's a little bit lower and so on. Okay, and then you can kind of touch it up a little bit. So extend the line, the next line is just a little bit shorter, just a little bit shorter, and so on. And then a little curve on the wing at the bottom. All right, and then what we do, same type of thing, we're going to start at that same starting point. And I have a little too much water on there. I'm going to curve this one up as well. And just show another little feather or two. So still kind of that V shape, but now we have some more detail. Then put a little pressure under that starting point to create the body. So just a little curve. And then a line back for the tail feather. Then very carefully, you can add a little beak. All right, so there's one bird. Now let's do one with the wing down. With the wing down, I start with the body. So just a little pressure on the liner brush to create a little volume. We're basically starting with the body. Then we'll pull the tail back. And we can add a little bit of the head. Okay, so then from there, we're going to pull back from the head. We're going to do another curved line. Then another curved line, and it comes out just a little bit. Another one, a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter, and then rounded as it goes into the body.
All right, so those are two simple ones. If you want to take it a little bit further, what you can do is we'll do the wing up again. So I'm just going to go a little bit faster. You can put a little more pressure on the brush. Then maybe this wing is a little bit more out this way. So you don't see quite as much of the wing, just a couple little feathers. Then curve the body underneath. And then tail feather coming back. You can always go at the end and lengthen the wing if you need to. Okay, and we'll do another one with the wing down, so line coming back. This time maybe the wing's out to the side a little bit more. Maybe this wing's up, like so, and a little beak. Okay, and I'll do one more. Another one with the wing down, so a little tail coming back. Just like the first one, but this time do the wing out to the side here. All right, so now how do I incorporate that into a large painting like this? Uh, so one mistake I see sometimes when people are painting birds into a painting is that they just automatically paint them black um, or raw umber, something really dark and um, relatively flat. But what you want to do is make sure you're harmonizing the color with the painting. If you look at this painting here, very pink and purple. Um, that's because I used alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue as the primary colors. And so what I want to do is I want to make a dark color, but I want to create something that fits in with this painting. So uh, ignore this raw umber. That's what I used just for the demo a second ago, but I've got alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. And what I'm going to do is make a color uh, that I find that will fit into this painting, uh, similar to you know, some of these dark shadows in here. So they'll still look dark, but the color will look right within the painting. So basically what I'm doing is taking some of my, I'm using some fat medium, so linseed oil and uh, odorless mineral spirits, a little bit more on the linseed side, and I'm thinning the paint down just like before uh, into an ink-like consistency. And what I'll do is go a little bit more on the alizarin side. And I'm going to have you guys zoom in and I'm going to paint these birds in. All right, I decided that this value is probably a little bit too dark for this painting, so I'm gonna add a little bit of white. And because I want these birds to look far away, I don't want them to compete with my dark shadows here, so you gotta find the right value as well to make them look like they're further away. So you can see I added some white there. And what I'm gonna do is just kinda pick a spot here uh, I'm going to go up here on this part of the painting and I'm going to just do those same things I did on the notepad. See, I'm going a little bit faster here, pulling that tail feather back, and a little 
beak shape. I want to make sure that these feathers out here are just nice and pointy. All right, so there's bird number one. Okay, I'll do another one, maybe just below. And like I said, just like last time, I'll do the body first. So just almost like a little bowling pin shape on its side. All right, just like that, I've got a couple birds flying through the sky in my painting. All right, I'll do another one down here, maybe with a different angle on the wing. So just drawing it a little bit lower and probably don't see quite as many of those feathers. So just a couple. Draw the little body underneath and the tail feather coming back. Now I'll do another one here. Maybe this one's kind of out on its side a little bit more. All right, I'll do one more over here. Alright, so we've got five birds flying through the sky. You can add as many as you'd like. If you want them to look even further away, you would just add a little more white to lighten up the value. So as you can see, I added in a few more birds here after my demonstration just to add to the flock. Uh, but for this, you know, you can play around with the value. Sometimes maybe go a little bit lighter to make the birds look further away and maybe a little bit darker to make them closer. But when you're doing these types of birds, it's more about having the flock of birds or maybe two or three birds rather than that being the centerpiece of the painting. So it's just a nice little addition to your painting to add some movement and add some life. I hope you enjoyed this week's technique of the week. If you have any questions, make sure you comment down below. Also like and subscribe to the channel. And if you get a chance, check out timgonyer.com for all of your online painting lesson needs. I have hundreds of online painting lessons in oil and acrylic with a lot of different subject matter. I also uh, have those on DVD as well. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you again next week with a new technique of the week.